Hi my dear students, welcome back to the computer class. In the previous video we started our second chapter Object Oriented Programming Paradigm. Okay, Object Oriented Programming Paradigm. In that we are discussing the various paradigms that we are using if the programs are very complex. So in the previous video we studied about the procedural oriented paradigm and also the object oriented paradigm. Procedural oriented programming complexities and object oriented programming advantages. The, so the speciality is object oriented programming paradigm is used to overcome all the complexities of procedural programming or POP. Then, Actually, C++ is an object-oriented programming language. C++ is an object-oriented programming language. Because in C++, we are giving importance to object or data. We already studied some of the symbol program in plus one itself. In all that program, we are declaring variables first. All the program execution is based on that program variables. Assignment, initialization, input, output, for all that purpose, we are using variables. So, if the program is more complex, then also we will use variables in C++ programming. Okay. So, in this video, we are going to discuss the four basic concepts of object-oriented programming. We will start with object, then class, data encapsulation and data abstraction. Okay, so these four basic concepts of object oriented we will discuss in this video. So, what is our uh, video consist of basic concepts of OOP. Okay, here I am going to write the short form of object oriented programming. What is the short form of object oriented programming? OOP concept. Then, the first basic concept of object oriented is object. The first concept that we are using in object oriented is object. So, any real life example or any instant or anything we can treat as object. For example, we can consider student as an object. Okay, student as an object. It has its own characteristics and behavior. Okay, characteristics and also the function. For example, a student characteristic means student name, then a student height, then mark, then which class that student is studying. All these belonging to characters category. Then after that, the functions. Functions means uh, reading, uh, what are the activities students are doing, reading, then playing, these all are belonging to their <coughs> actions. Okay, so two categories, characteristics and also function. Then again, we can uh, uh, use radio as an object. Okay, radio as an object. Then what are the uh, states of radio? On, off. We can switch on the radio, we can switch off the radio. Then next one, what will be the functions of radio? What are the functions that we are using in video or oh, oh, radio? But uh, radio, then we can increase the volume, we can decrease the volume, then we can on the radio, then we can off the radio. These all are the activities performed by the radio. Okay, so that means any of the real life example or any object can we can treat as object. Okay, so that is the speciality of object. So we can say that an object is anything, anything that we seen around as we considered as object. Anything that we seen around is considered as object. Example, radio, then a student, then a bike, motor bike, anything we can consider it as object because the main advantage of object oriented programming is we can easily relate with real life example. So in real life example, we will use object. Object may be anything that we can see around is treated as object. So this will be the first. In every object has their own uh, characteristics and also the behavior or state and also behavior. So according to the state and behavior, we can specify the activities of that object. So that is the first basic concept. Then the second basic concept is class. The second basic concept of object-oriented programming is 
class. Actually, class is similar to array or structure. For what we are using structure? For grouping elements, we are using structure. The same concept we are using in class also. Class also is used for grouping similar elements. Okay, class is used to group similar elements elements or we can say the definition of class is like that a class is a prototype or blueprint okay class is a photo type or prototype or blueprint that defines specification common to all object if there are any similarity between all the object then we can group all that object into a single class Okay, common specification common to all object. If we found any kinds of similarities, then we can group all that objects into a single class. For example, if a school or if a student class, we can combine all the students. That means UP students, high school student and also the higher secondary student. All these students we can group and we can give a suitable name as students. Because all these students are belonging to students category. Whether they are UP high school or high secondary, all are belonging to student category. So we can group all these students into a single class or single student class. So basically class is used for grouping or it acts as a prototype or blueprint. Okay, it acts as a prototype or blueprint to collect or defines a specification common to all object. Then the specification contains details of the data and act upon the data. Specification means it consists of data and functions. Data and functions. Okay, data and function. For example, if it is a student class, if it is a student class, it has their own data and function. Students' data means their register number, name, these all are belonging to their data category. Then, using these data, we can perform some kinds of operation, especially programming related operation. What are the programming relation functions or the activities that we are uh, performing using these data? We can display the student. We can display the student details. If we can display the student details mean we can display the student register number and also the name. And also if marks are also present we can calculate the total mark. And we can find out the average value. And also we can find out the percentage. Everything we can perf perform. So all these are belonging to function category. So which are the functions that we are performing using this function, uh, this kind of data. So we can say that. Class is a prototype or blueprint that specify or that is used to group the similar object. Then every data or every instance consists of or every class consists of different object. Every object has their own data and member function. Okay, so objects present in data is known as instances. Okay, objects present in data is known as instances so we can say that a, a class contain five instances five instances means five objects okay so that means uh, that's one not point point that we can add into the class so a class is a prototype or blueprint that specify uh, actually uh, class uh, we are using in programming the beginning stage of complex software starts with the class specification or class declaration then the speciality of class is in class there are three types of access specifiers are present. Okay, listen, in this chapter you don't want to study any of the programs because in this chapter we are discussing the concept and real life example. Only that much is enough. The definition of this object and also the real life example. So if you want to relate with any of the real life example, first you want to identify the exact definition. Then only you can relate it with any of the real life example. So here, so class means it has uh, some special features. Comparing to structure, class has some special features. The special features, the first special feature is we can 
specify the access specifiers. So actually a class consists of three access specifiers. First one is public. Second one is private. And third one is protected. Okay. These three access specifiers are present in a class. Okay, that is the main speciality of class. It consists of three access specifiers. This facility will not be available in procedural oriented pro programming paradigm or procedural programming. Because access specifier indicate the usability of that particular program code. For example, if you declare objects as public, then anyone can access that object. If we declare variables as public, then uh, private uh, public, then anyone can access. If we declare variable as private, then only some special function. It means that uh, functions are lo uh, local. That means only to that particular function we can use. Others can't use that function. That means we can specify uh, specify the accessibility of the variable. So that's why these all are known as access specifiers. Public, private and protected. One more is the protected. In object oriented concept there is one more approach present that is called inheritance. Inheritance means we are inheriting or we are inheriting some of the properties from base class to derived class. Or we are collecting or we are acquiring some of the properties from one class to another class. That we will discuss in the next video that is called inheritance. And it is also a basic uh, important concept of object oriented programming. So here, in protected means, if we are collecting features from one class to another class, we will use the term protected. So only in inheritance, we will use this protected access specifiers. Uh, in others, we can use public and also private. So if a class consists of three special access specifiers, public, private and protected. Okay, so this increases or this improves the security level of that programming concept. So the speciality of class. Actually class and structure both are same. Uh, uh, similarly, that means the concept remains same. Both are used for grouping objects or grouping data. Uh, structure is used for grouping uh, different data types, logically related data items. Class also logically related data items, but... The speciality is it provides three access specifiers, but that access specifier is not present in structure. Okay, is access specifier present in structure? No. Access specifiers are not present in structure. So that is a speciality of uh, class. So these are the first two uh, basic concept of O. First one is object and second one is class. Then third one. Then third one is, one more concept is called, third one is data abstraction. What is the next concept? Data abstraction. Okay, this is all one of the main uh, basic concept of object oriented programming. Data abstraction. Data abstraction means it specify that it will show only the essential features. Okay, showing only the essential features by hiding the, uh, showing only the essential features application and hiding the details from outside world. Showing only the essential features and hiding the internal details from outside world. That means the implementation step is hidden from outside world. Okay, so only the essential features we can view. For example, if you want to play a CD using DVD player or of whatever it is, if you want to watch the television, what do you want to do? You want to switch on the TV. Then automatically it will come. If you switch on, automatically we are getting the, that means the internal thing happens that we don't know. For example, if it is not in TV, television, uh, washing machine, fridge or all this, we only know the, in the external features. Internal features are hidden from the users. So that concept we are using in data abstraction. Showing only the essential features. Then the implementation details are hidden from outside world. That is known as data abstraction. 
clear showing only the essential features by hiding the implementation details from outside world then if we are using data abstraction there are different advantages are present that means data abstraction provide two important advantages the first advantage is the class internals are protected from accident user level access if the implemented implementation details are hidden nobody can interfere in class definition class definition means that will be the core of that programming so no outside access will be present in this data abstraction and second one any changes in the implementation step okay any changes in the implementation step it will not affect the external level okay because only the view level we are using that means whatever output we are getting only that is we are viewing the internal details okay what is actually happening inside that we don't know okay that concept is known as data abstraction okay clear that is called data abstraction then one more concept is present that is called data encapsulation what is it data encapsulation wrapping up of data and member function together is known as data encapsulation that means it binds together data and member function okay it binds together data and member function example i already mentioned private protected and also public access specifiers that we are using in class okay so using class we are creating programs if we are creating object oriented programming it's not uh, like similar c++ program definitely you want to declare class and class declaration is entirely different than normal declaration because in class we are using access specifiers like public private and protected so all these is used for implementing data encapsulation that means it is for binding data and function together and act as a single one okay if we look we will look like, it look like a single one but data and functions are different so that is the speciality of data encapsulation data encapsulation means binding together or data and functions together is known as data encapsulation so these are the four basic concepts of object oriented programming four basic concept we some more is remaining that we will discuss in the next video so first one object so again we will revise the topics that we studied so first one the basic concepts of object oriented programming what is the first concept object object means anything that we see around us can be treated as an object and all these object have their own properties then class a class means a class is a prototype or blueprint that define the specification common to all object okay specification common to all object then an object in a class is known as instance the next one data abstraction what is mean by data abstraction data abstraction refers to showing only the essential features of the application and hiding the details from outside world then one more basic concept is remaining that is called data encapsulation data encapsulation means an object uh, that it is an object oriented concept that binds together the data and functions together and kept both data and function safe from outside world for example if for a student mark 1 mark 2 mark 3 so many fields will be there here mark 1 mark 2 mark 3 all the marks we can make it as public then what about the fee details and all fee details we will kept as uh, private that means only the office people can view that details some other details like their mark and uh, their uh, address everything will be public but some confidential data also will be there so all these data will be kept as private and the remaining things will be make as public so in every software there will be private and public fields will be there public means anyone can view the details private means only a restricted user only a special group of users can view that details clear then one more is a protector so all these we are implementing in data encapsulation 
Okay, hope you understood this. Then, you want to write two questions in your notebook as a homework. What is mean by data abstraction and what is mean by data encapsulation? Okay, hope you understood the concept of base, uh, four basic concepts of object-oriented programming. Object, class, data abstraction and data encapsulation. Then, some more is reminding basic concept that we will discuss in the next video. Okay then, thank you.